number is 888-CAR-TALK. That's 888-227-8255. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Maximilian. Oh, of course. Maximilian. Max. Max. We'll call yeah. you Max for short. Where are you from, Max? Max, I'm from Valencia, California. Yes. And I'm listening to your program. I enjoy it so much. And I feel you two brothers are real mensch. Not, <laughs> not, on, not only this, you know, your, your audience are so funny. And I yeah. have a problem. And I thought uh, maybe I'll give you a call and you might solve the problem I have. What right. did you say about the stench? I didn't, I didn't get all that. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you're right. And if we can't solve it, our audience can solve it because they're the ones with the brains and we are the morons. Well, I've been in the car business all my life. That's why I like your talk show. And uh, last Friday the 13th, I had a problem and I can't get out of this problem. Yeah. You know, the car salesman, they're standing in the driveway waiting for customers. Uh huh. They work on the app system. And I saw one of my salesmen. What system? You know, they call it up system. Oh, the he next guy up. The driveway, the first one that first comes. First one up, right. It's his customer. Yeah, right, right. They work on commission. Of yeah. course. And I see one of my salesmen at 5 o'clock go to his bike across the street 10 times and come back to the showroom, change his mind. I say, George, what's the matter with you? He say, Max, it's 5 o'clock. I didn't eat all day. And every time I go to the bike to go to eat, my mind tells me I think a customer will come, and I change my mind. <laughs> I say, Judge, I can't believe it. <laughs> you can't live this way. Why won't you call me? I'll t take your turn, and you won't lose anything. He said, Max, can I go now? I said, sure. <laughs> he jumps into his bike. He takes off like crazy. And an old woman just bought a brand new Camry driving by. Bang! He hits her phone pump. <laughs> My God, what unlucky day. I run down to the woman. I want to help my salesman. The woman comes out of the car. She looks at the front bumper. She says, My God, I just bought this car. I say, Well... Mom, you could have killed my salesman. She said, I know, I know, I wasn't watching. Right. She was so honest. She said, the salesman didn't show me how to turn on the air condition. was 100 degrees in Valencia. I'm trying to find this air condition. And <laughs> bang! Now, she thought she hit him. I know That's that he, good. he hit her. So I relaxed. I saw, I relaxed. I said, oh, thanks, God. He said, ma'am. You're so honest, I'll take care of you. She said, you will? Yeah. I said, I have a big body shop. I'll put a new bumper, and we'll forget about the... I like your honesty that you said that you weren't watching. And I saw how my stupid salesman took off. <laughs> he looked to the right instead of to the left and took off with his bike. <laughs> so I take her to the body shop, and I call Rick. I say, Rick, call Toyota. They'll send you the same color bumper, put four screws, put the new bumper, and that's the end of the story. So he calls Toyota, <clears throat> and they send him a bumper, a bumper. And the woman tells me, Max, can I go across the street? There's Target. There's Mervyn Shopping Center. While he'll fix my bumper. I say, great idea. And Take the bicycle, right? <laughs> no. So she goes across the street. Poor woman didn't know that the body shop closes at 6. Oh. 8.30, she comes with 20 bags. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking around, no car. The body shop is closed. There's nobody. I got it. I got it. She buys a new car from George. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. Listen to this. This is a real story. I have a problem. Oh, there's a problem at the end of this story. They call me from down the street. He said, Max, there's an old nice woman screaming her Toyota, her dog. I said, what dog? I didn't know she had a dog in the car. <laughs> I take my keys. I run to the body shop. I open this huge metal door, you know, three doors at a time with the chains. Yeah. And what do I see? They pushed 35 cars behind her car. Everything went in. I go to the back seat of the car. I see a cage with oh. a little schnauzer. <laughs> he's dead. No. He's with his legs up. I started sweating. My heart started beating. This stupid body man put the car next to the paint booth. 
everything locked, concrete roof in the body shop, 110 degrees. I start sweating, my heart started beating. I said, that's all I need now. I went crazy. I'm lucky I'm working 20 years in Valencia. I know everybody. Right away, I go to the phone, and I call a customer of mine that has a pet store, and I say, Joe, I have a big problem. He said, Max, what's happened? I said, they just killed the schnauzer in my body. He said, Max, how did they kill him? I said, it doesn't matter. Do you have a schnauzer? He said, Max, I don't. You know, I like you. If I had a schnauzer, I'll give you one. I said, Joe, you have to help me. He said, I'll help you. He goes to his computer, start locating, and say, Max, you're lucky. <laughs> 20, miles, 20 miles from here in Acton, there's a German breeder named Hans shows 12 schnauzers. I said, really? <laughs> I take the car 300 miles an hour. I come to this breeder. I put the schnauzer on his table, and I say, Hans, I need a miniature schnauzer like this one. <laughs> He looks at me. He said, Max, you're in the wrong place. I said, what do you mean? They told me you have 12. He said, Max, I do have 12. But those 12 that I have, they're champions. They're purebred. I bring them from Germany. I have all the certificates. This miniature schnauzer will cost you from fifteen to $2,000 a piece. I said, what? <laughs> 1200 to 2000 I counted every pocket. I had three hundred and seventy-five dollars. <laughs> I say, Hans, I don't need a, sh- I don't need a champion. I don't need a purebred. I want to replace this dead one. All I have is three hundred and seventy-five. Please help me. He say, Max, you don't want to breed them. I say, No, I want to replace this dead one. He say, Wait a minute, I have something for you. He goes to his backyard. He comes with a miniature schnauzer. He say, Max, you're lucky. He's a year old. He's home trained. I love him. I don't have any certificate. I'll give it to you as is for two seventy five. I said, great. That's but no okay. warranty? <laughs> no, no, as is. As is, right. I give him right away the two seventy five. It was a salt and pepper gray yeah. schnauzer. <laughs> he takes the dead one, he puts him in a box. He takes the live one, he puts him in a cage. I give him the 275, and I drive down to the dealership, and the woman is walking in the showroom, nervous. I come. I say, thanks, God. I couldn't believe what I found, the same dog. I say, honey, here's your keys. Here's your car outside. Let me help you with all the stuff you bought. She said, Max, don't help me. I had it today. She takes the stuff. She goes to the car. She looks from the front window. She looks in again. She turns right away to the other side of the car. She looks and says inside the car. She threw all the stuff she has holding in her hand. She comes to the showroom screaming, Max, in German, she screamed, this is nicht mein Hund. That's not my dog. I say, what dog? I say, Max, don't play games with me. If you want to get me my dog right away, I'll call the police. You'll have a big problem. I say, Mom, I swear to God, I don't know. Is this your car? He say, Max. When I drove by here, I had a dead dog in the car. <laughs> I said, what dead dog? I could see it coming, you know. <laughs> what dead dog? She said, Max, where's my dog? I said, I have it. She said, where? I said, Hans. She said, how did you get to Hans? I said, well, I, I thought they killed him in my body shop. <laughs> so we went back to Hans. She saw him sitting in a box. She said, Max, you're lucky you have my dog. I thought I'm dying. I didn't know if to laugh or to cry. <laughs> she takes her dead dog and she wants to take off. I say, Mom, I really apologize. What happened? I say, Max, you're something else. Let me tell you. I never had any children. This dog is 17 years and three months old. And this morning I had to pick up my new Toyota. She went to the bedroom to take the dog. He was dead. So she went crazy. She calls her sister. And she tell him, I don't know what to do. Snoopy died, and I have to pick up a new car. He's all my life. So her sister says, what do you want? He's almost 18 years old. He's blind. Time came. Thanks God you got rid of him. He said, it's easy for you, but that's all my life. She so said, well, what do I do? He said, I'll tell you what you do. If you come to Thousand Oaks, the pet hospital, in 48 hours, they'll freeze him, and they'll stuff him, and it looks like alive, 
and you'll have him forever in your bedroom. <laughs> That's some dormity, something like this. So she she took the dog and she ran to pick up her car and that's what happened and she takes off with the dead dog and i'm sitting there with my live dog trying to give him back to the hans the breeder he had the sign no refunds and he said max i'm running a business you own this dog i said i don't need this dog didn't you see what happened he said max i don't care dead dog no dead dog i'm running a business it's your dog i said okay can i leave it in consignment he said sure i said give me half the money i just want him to a good home he said max we'll see what holidays are coming see what i'll do guess what this friday i get a note from him that he wants 75 dollars a week to feed him. Now I have a payment. <laughs> All because now you were I have trying... a payment. <laughs> so what I need help from you yeah. if your audience can find a real good home for this miniature salt and pepper uh, schnauzer. schnauzer. I'll really appreciate it. He's a good dog. He's a year old, but no paperwork. No paperwork. But house trained. But he's, house trained. He's house trained. Right. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is a business we haven't started yet. I mean, we've been matching up people, but yeah. we've never matched up pets with people. Yeah. So we will do that. Absolutely. What I really wanted is to give it to the old woman that her dog passed away. Sure. Yeah. And, and I felt bad for her. Well, this one could play with the other one. It wouldn't be too exciting. <laughs> well, it's not a joke. It's a true story. No, I know it's a you know You couldn't have made up a story like this. This I'm had to be true. You. I knew the story was true from the beginning because you couldn't have made it up. <laughs> I, I really want this dog to have a, a good home because, you know, the whole story is is sad in a way. Sure. Well, you're a good guy, Max, and you tell a great story. Nobody can tell that story <laughs> like you told it. And we will find. What, do you have a name for this little schnauzer? No, I don't have a name. That's what. First thing we have to do is come up with a name. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we we we'll the, work on a name and we'll put ads in the I paper have, every day. I, I like this little schnauzer. I go to him every weekend. I have no problem giving him my name. Yeah, I was going to say Max his name should good. be Max. Max is yeah, good. His name should be Max. Okay, we'll don't do you it. Think so? Yeah, Max? I think so. so. Max is it. We're looking for a home for little Max. Okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> Good talking to you. Thanks for calling. Our pleasure. Bye bye. Bye bye. We're gonna we're gonna find a home for Max. Anybody who, first of all, lives in California would be nice. So within driving distance, he right? ships. He'll ship. He'll ship. <laughs> I'm afraid of shipping the little Schnauzer on a plane. If you're interested in the little Schnauzer, Max, he didn't say whether Max was a male or female. I think it. he's a male. It must be male. Yeah, I think it's a male. Yeah. Yeah. No papers though. But no papers. You don't need papers. He's house trained. <laughs> <laughs> Just let us know, and we'll make a match up here. Yes, we will. Oh, well, it's man. happened again. You have squandered another perfectly good hour listening to Car Talk. Our esteemed producer is Doug the Subway Fugitive, not a slave to fashion, Bongo Boy Berman. Our associate producers are David the Calves of Belleville Green and Catherine Frau Blucher Fenelosa. <laughs> our web lackey is Doug the Old Gray Mayor, assisted by Connie Bridgeford. Our engineer is John Cartman Parati. Our theme music is by David Dog Grisman. And our technical, spiritual, and menu advisors just back from the Port of Spain, Quiche Lorraine, Candy Cane, Madeleine, and Cheap Champagne Weight Gain <laughs> is John Bugsy Lawler. Our public opinion pollster is Paul Murky of Murky Research, assisted by statistician Marge Novera. Our staff intuitionist is Ivan Inkling. <laughs> our footwear consultant is Susan Sharks. Our empathy coach is Enzo Watt. Empathy coach is Enzo Watt? And so what? Oh, and so what? <laughs> Our urgent response coordinator is Candace Waite. The pre-recorded portions of today's show were selected by our staff librarian, all been heard before. Our personal hygiene advisor from the Tokyo office is Oteka Shawa. <laughs> Our auto seat tester is Fitz Matush. Our mother-in-law liaison is Stella Payne Diaz. Our Russian chauffeur is Peak Off and Drop Off. And our staff tailor is Hugh Jass. He's a lot of turnover in the staff here at the end of the year. Our chief counsel from the law firm of Dewey Cheatham and Howe is you, Louis Dewey, known to the iPod wearing Trustafarians in Harvard Square as Huey Louie Dewey. Thanks so much for listening. We're Click and Clack, the Tappert Brothers, and don't drive like my brother. And don't drive like my brother. Here, here. We'll be back next week. Bye bye.
You can get a podcast of this show, which is number 1452, download other mind-numbing episodes, and check out our CD collections and Car Talk Extremely Casual Wear all over at cartalk.com. Also this week at cartalk.com, ever wonder what's going to break next on your particular car? Yeah, everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, in your car, yeah. <laughs> but for everyone else, we now have enough data to predict what's likely to go wrong and at what mileage you need to start worrying about it. Really? Yeah, you can now see the most frequent complaints for your particular year, make, and model and get a jump on worrying. Check out our brand new car complaints database all week at cartalk.com. Car Talk is a production of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe and WBUR in Boston. And even though Malyotsis everywhere think to themselves, you know, Smith has a nice ring to it. <laughs> Whenever they hear us say it, this is NPR.